Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here, 27 degrees in Arizona. There is an elk, moose, or some sort of animal, deer-like creature behind me. Do not be alarmed, it is made of plastic. It is not gonna nestle its teeth into my earlobe, nor is it looking for food in the shape of these sunglasses, which I do not need yet. It is 7.15 a.m., 27 degrees. You can almost see the coolness in the air, wearing my hoodie. I am heading eastbound. Now I am located right here, Williams, Arizona, the gateway to the Grand Canyon, which is about an hour north. It says it right there. I'm not going to the Grand Canyon today. I'm on a bit of a, not a time crunch, but I am trying to make my way eastward to Florida over the next week to 10 days, give or take. And I'm inviting you I love this weather. Below freezing. 32 is freezing. About five degrees below that. The sun, the sun is rising. There's a sunset over here. Of course, it's starting to fade away just a little bit. You can kind of see it there. I'm inviting you to join me. Shall you? Stroll around this little area before getting back in my car. And what you're seeing here in the bottom of the frame my sunglasses, which I really don't even need yet. Here at this restored gas station, the rock shop, the rock shop. You want a rock? This is the place to get it. There's an old Conoco gasoline petroleum products painted right there on the side. Love it. Love it so much. I do want to come back at some point. I've been to the Grand Canyon a couple times in my life and it is really does not, pictures and video do not do it justice, but I would like to return in the future at some point and stay there for a couple days, at least in the Grand Canyon area. Now is not the time for that. Imagine getting fuel out of one of these. Back in the olden days, I'm having a good time on the road so far. I've stated this before, but this is kind of a, a teaser, if you will, of what's gonna be happening with travel starting after New Year's. Except after New Year's, I will not be going as quick as a pace. Classic, not car alert, but classic truck alert. Long-winded intro, I'm gonna get going. But not before showing this gentleman here, who is in the holiday season, he has his festive attire on in the shape of a Santa cap. How you doing, partner? How you doing, buddy? A little cold out here, huh? You cold? You cold? You stop your feet! Yes! Alright. We'll get moving. And in the excitement of that cool, crisp intro, forgot to give the date as the recording of this. It is December 1st. Oh, Bison, you're behind that fence. December 1st, 2021. Now, those are deer. Hello, Bison, deer, cougars, jaguars, and even an eagle. Oh, is that? Who is that? Who is that? right there that is the real sasquatch that is the real bigfoot but we all know who's more important the one and only big the foot <laughs> that's me laughing that's not big the foot laughing that's not big the foot laughing i'm i'm, I'm putting putting words in his mouth Driving into the sun. It's kind of a challenge for now as it has just risen. You know, in a little while, the sun gets a little higher and the sky won't be quite as bad, but it's kind of tough to see the road sometimes with the sun right here glaring in the face. But it adds to the ambiance.
used as a filming location in the movie Easy Rider. A good road trip flick. Of course, starring Peter Fonda, Dennis Hopper, and Jack Nicholson as well. Nice touch with the train going by. They were denied lodging here when they were going on their road trip on motorcycles. I'm not on a motorcycle, but they were. Oh, I am loving the weather. This is pretty close to Flagstaff. I'm probably 15, 15 minutes from Flagstaff, more or less. And the road it's on kind of ends down there. So you have to veer off of Interstate 40 to find it and then get back on I-40. You go that way, it's a complete stop. Looking in the window here through the glass, some good stuff in there, some antiques, Coca-Cola machine, seven up sign. This is inside the building. I just showed the exterior of. And on the other wall is a large poster of the three main stars from Easy Rider as well. That is pretty dang cool, gotta be honest. I'm gonna get moving. Also, pretty neat they have this, this relic here parked in front next to the, the gas pumps. Worked out perfectly when I parked as that train went by. Having some good luck with trains so far. This is a Ford. Cushion has been removed from the seat. Decided to wear the t-shirt I purchased yesterday from Roy's Motel and Cafe, which was kind of out in the middle of nowhere. You never know what you're gonna find. This is very close to where I just was, about a quarter of a mile down that road. A treasure trove, if you will. Holy cow, look at these beautiful relics right here. All these old buses and vans, well, all bus, no vans, all buses, freeway traffic going by. This is off the access road that has no end. You, you cannot gain access back to the freeway that way. You gotta backtrack. Look at these. What in the heck? I am so glad I noticed these. Antiques. Streamline Travel Home. Wow. Take a look at this. Incredible. Just sitting here. Obviously they are owned by someone. Beautiful. City of Commerce, Municipal, Municipal, I cannot talk, it's so cold my lips aren't working. Municipal bus has the Arizona license plate up in the window. Oh man, this, uh, this, is, this is good. This is good stuff. This one's gutted out. It's got a Care Bear in the window there. An ambulance. Oh, I can't get over, I cannot get over this.
Number 58 signified right there on the window. Located in Arizona. No indication on if they are for sale or if they're going to be restored or just collecting dust out in the elements, but they are magnificent. Are they not? This one just has one seat in it. Well, a couple seats, because the driver has a seat. Oh, and another train going by. Oh, oh. magical. It's the little things, folks. It's the little things. Let's just enjoy the sounds of the train and the traffic behind me. One last look here at these beauties. All right, moving on. What in the heck is this? What the heck is that? The campus of Northern Arizona University. Look at this very futuristic dome here. But it's not the dome that I wanted to showcase. It is, this is rumored to be the first, if not one of the first, muffler men seen across the U.S. And it could have, I cannot confirm or deny the fact that this could have been built in the early 60s for the Lumberjack Cafe here in Flagstaff as well. And of course, been moved over here to the campus. Now the reason these are called muffler men is because the formation of the hands. You could see he's holding this axe, but the formation of the hands could have a muffler, which some of them were also utilized to, you know, to give business to a lot of mechanics and whatnot. You know, you'd be driving down the road and this would be like a beacon. I need to get my muffler fixed. And a Paul Bunyan-esque figure like this would be holding a muffler. He just happens to be holding an axe. So that's the, the kind of the backstory of a muffler man. True Americana right here. When you think of roadside attractions and road trips, at least for me, I think of the muffler men. There are quite a few of them across the US. And this is a this is quite a mighty piece of history right here in Northern Arizona. Glorious. All right, moving on. Really is some beautiful countryside out here. I've gotten off the 40 onto another access road. About to pull up to us. Kind of a familiar spot here. parallel to the interstate.
more or less from this angle could be seen in Forrest Gump where him and a bunch of others are running along here and it's the mud scene where the smiley face ends up on the t-shirt it's kind of from right from this angle also speaking of filming locations a lot of people make the mistake I have noticed over the years people have said oh you were at Twin Arrows Arizona that was in the the movie Joe Dirt starring David Spade the fireworks scene and that is incorrect that was not filmed here Joe Dirt was not filmed here at Twin Arrows in Arizona I'm gonna get out park my car right over here and just kind of meander around Someone has left these down on the ground. It is a simple mistake, however, because they do show two arrows in that scene from Joe Dirt. But if you watch it back closely, there are mountains directly behind the fireworks stand where here the mountains are, are way off. If you pay close attention to that. One of the, one, one other film that always comes to mind that I get a lot of comments on, if I ever go to the La Brea Tar Pits in Los Angeles, by the way, this looks like a robot. I will have people, people later say, oh, you should have covered one of the spots from Last Action Hero where they went to the La Brea Tar Pits. But in fact, if you've ever seen that movie as well, even though they make it seem like it's the Tar Pits, it was a pre-built tar pit area that was not filmed on the property the same property at La Brea Tar Pit so fun fact just for future reference sometimes things are not what they seem also the arrow oh yeah noticing here the arrow the bottom portion of the second twin arrow has finally fallen off and been removed probably been by here at least five times in my lifetime. And each time, the bottom portion of the arrow is starting to get a little bit more decrepit and fall it off. And finally, fall off, someone must have got it as a souvenir. But this is an iconic 66 spot, if ever there was one. Twin Arrows, Arizona. Love it. All right, gonna walk up here. Should be able to get inside. It's all pretty much open to the elements, open air now at this point in time. Soothing sounds of traffic going by. There are some nails down there. Don't want to step on those. And the structural stability of this has seen better days. Front portion used to be a diner back in the heyday. Would have been neat to eat here back in the day when it was still still open for business. 
However, those days are long gone. Long gone. A lot of history in here. This is probably not safe. You know, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna stand underneath here too long. This is not, yeah, you just have a hard hat in here. I'm gonna go ahead and exit out this side into where the diner was. Hey, this looks a little bit better, but over here, that's about to cave in there. Really surprised this is even still standing. However, parts of the base here, parts of the structure are made out of this concrete and brick and rock work. So this probably isn't going anywhere, but the woodwork not gonna be around forever. Even part of the tile, tile down here all broken up. This is completely open to the elements back here. It's like it got smashed in by something. And the diner section, look at that. This is the kitchen, very small. This diner, very cozy little diner, awesome. Once again, true Americana at its finest. It is now gone by the wayside, even the checkerboard right down there. I'm gonna try to step through this door if possible. Be able to show the front. Got the twin arrows over there. This is a spot I always have to stop off when I'm trying to make up time getting, going coast to coast or going down I-40. Yeah, if you use your imagination, you can see the diner there. That textbook, classic architecture of a diner. Even still says cafe amongst the graffiti up top. I love it. All right, moving on. Approaching some relics here, just above Canyon Diablo. It's been a little while since I passed through this section. I have been here a number of times. I should call this an update, what it looks like now. The silhouette there, it might be tough to see, but there's a silhouette of a cowboy painted right there on the side of the cylinder. You can kind of see him with his hat on arm raise there and this building up here which used to be standing it's fallen down now it's gone oh yeah this is great once again the Sun is silhouetting it out but check out the painting below behind the graffiti there it was part of the theming that was once out here at this I guess an RV resort of some sort Back in the day, this is the water tank. This gentleman with the quite the scruff wagon going on. The beard is a kicking. Check out his cap. Even current day, if you want to do a little camping up here, a little boondocking, if you had an RV or if I still even had my van and you had a you know an air mattress in the back, you could easily, completely accessible to pull up in here for the evening get 40 winks, get a little shut-eye. It's what it was created for, even as a business. And you can even see when it was the RV park. They have some of the electricity portions right down there. And they stretch all across this plain. Across the old dusty plains. I believe the last time I was through here, this building was still standing. It was a 
an, an A-shaped, an A-shaped frame that went up like that, and then down. But not any mere, as Clouseau would say, about the priceless Steinway. Not that this is a piano. And I have never noticed that there was a pool over here. But there is, in fact, a pool. Now, if I fancied myself as a bit of a skater with any talent on a skateboard other than just simply going down the road, this would be, oh my gosh, this would be a skater's dream right here. Holy cow, this is perfection. Well, I say that, I'm not a skater. But I would imagine this would be good for anyone that could don a skateboard and utilize this to its full potential. Right? Look at the curve. I mean, it's a pool, so I don't know why I'm getting so excited, but yeah, you could just see someone on a skateboard kind of dipping down, grinding the side. So if you want to make the commute, anyone that anyone that fancies themselves as a bit of a skater, here's your spot right here. Here's your spot. Okay, I'm gonna go down the hill just a bit, show see show something that's down there. Hopefully it still still remains. They used to have mountain lions cages down there. And the sign should still be there. It's been there. Been there for decades since this place closed. It's at the bottom over there near Interstate 40 of Canyon Diablo. Reminds me of the video game for PlayStation I used to play back in the day. Diablo and Diablo 2! Of course, no electricity out here to play video games. This roof caved in. The whole, the whole building has fallen down. The roof crushed the walls. Kind of looking for the feet. The Wicked Witch here in the west. Wouldn't surprise me if... It kind of reminds me of Wizard of Oz. Also, you might notice I'm doing a lot longer unedited takes. Now, obviously, these videos are edited. I'm trying to do lengthy takes and really soak in the ambiance, not just for myself, but also for the viewers, for those that are watching you. And I figure even though they might be longer videos and not everyone could sit and watch every moment of it, at least it's documented and can be skimmed through. Or if someone wants to watch the entire thing, they have the ability. But I'm just honestly, in all honesty, I'm completely at this stage in my game and doing this. I just wanna, I wanna have some peaceful moments not quick cuts, not quick edits, and kind of go for a different type of pacing. So if you've noticed that, it is intentional. It's completely intentional. Just wanted to state that. As a very noisy truck goes by, off in the distance, I'm happy to say that the mountain lion wording here is still here across this old abandoned zoo. Pretty fantastic that that still remains. Now the lions, well, I would imagine the lions are not here anymore, at least in the past when I went through here. I didn't see any mountain lions around don't want to witness any of those or meet any mountain lions. Just personal preference. At least one that's in the wild. But you can see over there there's a lot of rock work, former buildings across the Canyon Diablo. Watch your footing here. So these are the cages. They have been freed many decades ago. Still have the kind of chicken wire there on top of it. There were not chickens in here though. Well, maybe there were. I would hope they did not have full-size mountain lions 
inside this tiny, these tiny cages. If they did, it is a good thing that this place is no longer here. This is a, that's a tiny, tiny little area for a mountain lion. I would say over here, most likely. These are, this is a little bit of a bigger area. Bigger, bigger home. Yeah! For a mountain lion. Right in there. Oh yeah. Definitely see, you do not notice this going down I-4, I-40, I'm gonna say I-4. So I'm thinking of Florida already once I get back out there. I-40, which is off in the distance. You don't even see this from the road. You have to get out of the car, drive off the access road, even walk down here to notice these. So if you ever pass by all this that I am showing, if you're ever on a road trip, I highly encourage you to take your time, get out, and just witness this history that is along not only Route 66, but Interstate 40. Both of those roads run pretty much parallel to each other through this section. This is the Canyon Diablo. I've said that a number of times. I just want to make it clear that there is really a canyon back here, which really you cannot see from the road either. Not in great detail like this. And you think of the Grand Canyon, but this is pretty great. It's the Great Canyon of the Diablo action. Now another, you know how rumors and hearsay and stories can mold and morph over time. You never know if there's really truth to it. But this bridge right here is a strong rumor that this very bridge, which I do not think is structurally sound, and you cannot drive over at the moment unless you are brave to go over rocks and whatnot to even get to. But this bridge was supposedly, this is what I've heard over time and looked up, over time, over the years, was one of the inspirations for cars. Radiator Springs, same type of bridge. Now, there's a lot of bridges that look like this. But, you know, the movie Cars, based on 66. This is on 66. And there's a bridge that looks just like this in the Pixar film, Cars. There you have it. Moving on. You didn't think I was going to leave you, did you? No worry. Come along. Keep come, 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 come along with me. It might just be me. Probably not just me. But time the last couple of years really has no bearing. Sometimes it seems like it's gone by really fast. Sometimes it seems like it's dragged on. You know, I think because of 2020, really kind of messed everyone. You know, their, their ability to, for time, me especially in my brain. So I do not recall exactly how long ago when I was here, maybe a year and a half, two years, but it almost seems like yesterday. But it wasn't yesterday, it was a couple of years ago. Maybe a year and a half ago. See, I'm, I'm having a trouble with the concept of time. You have no concept of time. This is Meteor City Road. I'm, I'm just kind of rambling now. This is Meteor City Road that runs parallel to the 40 here. Back in the day, long time ago, they used to have what was stated, according to them, this gift shop called Meteor City Trading Post. They used to have what they stated to be the largest map of Route 66 on a wooden fence that went around the property. You can see the wooden fence is gone now. It is just a chain link fence. So that has fallen over. Last time I was through here, it was snow all over the ground. It was not the 
the trip I did across I-10 from California back to Florida last year. Well, I guess that would have been this year, but winter of this year earlier, just after New Year's. A different trip, but still a lot of snow on the ground the last time I went through here. I-40 is a lot farther north than I-10, but sometimes even I-10 gets a lot of snow, but I-40 gets really cold. <laughs> Says kick it on 66. Help us restore what that sign says. Now, according to the owner of the property who has sealed this whole area up so you can't wander around, it's gonna be called Earl's. Oh no, it's not called Earl's. It says over, over there that you can sleep on a corner at Earl's in Winslow, just like the song says, it says, pardon the dust while we're remodeling. Meanwhile, visit the Jackrabbit Trading Post. I think I will do that. I'm going to visit the Jack Ra Jackrabbit Trading Post. I'll do that. This is this piece of wood with the painting on it has been here for about two years. Oh, we are. Look at that. It's not we're remodeling. It says we are. And the R is in quotations. Why is the R in quotations? I don't know. But I am gonna abide. Okay, I got distracted. I was gonna say I'm, I'm gonna abide by what they stated on that wood, that piece of wood with the paint. But I got distracted. I'm gonna go to the Jackrabbit trading post momentarily down the way. But look at this, there's a train over there. Another train. Yeah, I'm liking these long, drawn-out takes just to just to give the feel, the ambiance. The reason I'm driving down this dirt road, the pavement turns into a dirt road, is because I want to show the old signage up here that used to promote the store. I caught it from the interstate and wanted to get a better view of it from the dirt area here. There it is. Look at that. Little relics of the past. Okay, moving on to the next spot. And after about a 30 minute commute, 30 miles, from Meteor City Road, I have now arrived at an iconic spot. Now when you think of Disney California Adventure, if you've been to DCA, and Cars Land, you will notice this. But the reproduction there is based on a real spot. And I'm always happy when I'm able to go by here. And where is here? Here. Okay, that, that didn't work. Here it is. It is here. Or here it is. Which always gets me thinking about, you know, theme parks, especially Disney, thing I love about it is the fact that it is based on real places. Americana, Main Street USA, Small Town Life, things like that. But 90% of what is in there as a reproduction really exists. Why not go out and witness it across America. Like I said, I love theme parks. 
but I also love the real deal. Getting out in it, getting out into the nitty gritty, the nooks, the crannies. That worked out well. The train I showed back at Meteor City Road Trading Post was going from this direction. It's going westbound. That train you just saw was eastbound. I passed the train going down I-40, thinking I would see it going this way, but it worked out well. Caught it the other way. It's just a little store, a little roadside store. Sells t-shirts and magnets, things like that. There's the rabbit, and here are some classic car, classic cars alert. Here it is, here's the classic car alert, as shown right there on the license plate that they also sell inside. And there's some ears on top of this one, and a couple other classic cars over in the distance over there. You can kind of see them, and you see all the trucks going by on the freeway. Yep, yeah, definitely always stop here. There's been times during winter time that they will close off the interstate and you can't go any farther than this point. I was told that story when I went in here once and the owner said, yeah, interstate's closed down, too much snow. It snows a lot and gets very icy in this area. I was just talking to the current owner and he was saying, so this logo is the one you see on the shirts, this style rabbit with the angle there where he's kind of down on the the hind quarters are down and the, the two front legs so that's different than the the photo op you can get right over here he said this is the third bunny that has been here and someone was passing through and they were according to him they were creating or taking some items to a theme park in california non-disney related another theme park they made fiberglass or at least these type of structures, characters. And he said, do you have a bunny? They said, we do have a bunny. So this is this is where this bunny came from. The third incarnation, if you will, of the bunnies here in front of the trading post. I was also asking if they get any sort of percentage or a cut from the utilization of the here it is sign that Disney uses at Disneyland, California Adventure, second theme park at Disneyland because they have one very similar to this. He stated that John Lasseter came through here. He talked to Lasseter years ago, went in and talked to him, and the deal they came up with is, if they want to make a sign like this in the park, they did not get any kind of cut for that or any monetary gain, but any merchandise anyone uses that is similar to this, this is copywritten. However, the sign, according to the owner, over here, they did not get a percentage. So when you go, if you ever go to Cars Land, Radiator Springs area at DCA, that sign that looks like this, based on this, they just let them have that image for free. Very interesting. But merchandise, they get a cut. There will be a legal issue. Fun fact. I also asked if he had coffee gonna get myself a piping hot caffeinated beverage and he said he does not sell coffee because not enough demand not enough not enough turnover rate with people stopping in to have a freshly brewed cup of coffee now this is the jackrabbit campground or former campground we're gonna get another train coming by and there is a swing set up here that is just kind of sitting here, rotting away.
another access road. Fort Courage, well, the former Fort Courage, straight ahead here. And it seems like every time I revisit this place, it is more dilapidated, more downtrodden, and more destroyed than it was before. It's been empty and closed off for years. And I believe they had a fire recently. There was a time many years ago that part of it was still open, so I was lucky enough to visit it back when part of the gift shop was still open. The pancake house at that time, gosh, it was probably seven, eight years ago, maybe even Maybe even more than that, when the gift shop was open, the gift shop was right over here. And it was the only thing that was open, right there. Fort Courage. Wonder where the fire was. I saw a news article that there was a fire that burned part of this down. I'm gonna get out. I'm gonna stop and get out and see what I can find. Oh yeah. I see the, oh yeah, I see where the fire was back there. Wow. Now this roadside attraction, well, it used to be roadside attraction, Fort Courage, based on a TV show from the 60s called F Troop. You can see over here, this is where the fire took place. This whole section has been pretty much closed down for a long time, except for that gift shop I mentioned, you know, from half a decade ago or longer, which closed shortly after that. It's just been sitting empty. Gotta watch where I step there is, it's like maybe a horse or cows have been out here grazing and have left some remnants from their digestive tract. You know what I mean. Some having to kind of trod around that. The bridge is still here. Oh, even though Definitely not something you want to walk across. Fallen in, all caved in, mangled. Yeah, don't go across that. Hello? Hello? A record player. Hello? It's dark in there. Very dark in there. Hello? No, I'm good.
glass is shattered out there. Hello? Hello? Is there anyone hiding there in the dark? Another Clouseau reference. The Pavlera of the Parallels. <coughs> oh. Hello? Looks to be the only remnant of the name still here on this water tower, water tank. Can be seen from the road as you drive by. Fort Courage. Nothing more than a moderate shell of what it once was, this roadside attraction. Like many along this interstate, Okay, I stand corrected. There is another sign there that has the name on it. Next to the closed gas station. I'm also noticing right down here, this says reserved for the mail bus, which I would imagine means the post office employee and the mail car, but it faintly says, reserved for the mail bus. And up here as well, also states the name. So it says that if there's three different signs that have the name, that would be a good relic to have. Others seem to have taken some of the former stuff that used to be along the side of the walls here where it says, Curio's gifts and groceries Along the side of that wall there used to be some, some wooden figures. They've been removed. You can still see where those used to be mounted and nailed up to the wall there. So it's torn the fence down. And right there you can see the silhouette. Someone has taken it off of the side. You can still see the outline from years of the sun bleaching the, the outskirts of this, of this figure. About a mile or two behind the distance of where I'm walking is the state line of New Mexico where this place is kind of falling on some hard times. It says hard right there. So New Mexico is right over that way. See all the trucks going by. It's very interesting that this also burned down last time I was through here, you know, a year or two ago. 
there was a gift shop, a rather large gift shop here as well, similar in style to the one a while back over at Meteor Crater Road. The same kind of dimensions as that. Almost, almost exactly the same, probably the same architect built that one. You know, a few hours back, a couple hours back, built this one. This one has now been burned down to a crisp. Was not expecting this. You got the caution tape here. Wow. In fact, you see the signage right there that says museum and all that, gallery, gift shop. Goodness. I know the charcoal remains and the smell of burn will last a long time, but it is still, smells pretty fresh. Like it definitely smells like a campfire. And I went in here before. I, I did go in here when it was open and when it was abandoned over a series of different years. Was not expecting this. There you go, a little update. A little update. An unexpected update. State line right over there, New Mexico. I will be going to Albuquerque tonight. I'm not gonna film anything in New Mexico. I'm gonna try to make up some time. I have some family in New Mexico just for the time being. It just kind of coincidentally works out that they are in Albuquerque the same time I'm gonna be around Albuquerque. So we're gonna link up. So I'll spend a couple days in Albuquerque, like Bugs Bunny says, I don't want to take a wrong, a wrong turn. I don't want to take a left turn in Albuquerque. So I'm going to be there the next couple days. And that's going to do it for today. Have you seen a more trash-filled former gas station before than this? I never have. That is a sight to behold. It is a wasteland of garbage right here. This garage is no longer being utilized to fix up cars right here. Arizona, right here. New Mexico, right there. New Mexico is right there. I mean, I could probably walk over the state line to be very dangerous. What was that noise? Something moved in there. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. The vlog is over. <laughs> Something was moving in there.